Hello everyone. I haven't been repairing equipment for a long time, but sometimes there are exceptions for close people. Exceptions also include devices that are personally interesting to me. These are usually various curiosities or retro devices that I haven't encountered before. Recently, one of the viewers, after seeing some of my videos reviewing retro technology, reached out to me with a request for repair. A very interesting battery charger for car batteries, manufactured in the distant year of 1987, which belonged to his grandfather. So, for this person, this item has special meaning, and I took on the task with pleasure, considering that the charger is quite specific. So today will be a nostalgic video, which I will try to make interesting, heartfelt, and informative. By the way, according to the subscriber, the charger is almost in working condition. Only the indicator doesn't work. The charging current. This indicator is precisely the cherry on top. It is, unlike anything else. Here it is neither analog nor digital, but gas discharge and very attractive. The problem is that the gas discharge indicator itself seems to be working, but it doesn't show the charging current. Therefore, the problem is most likely in the indicator's control circuit. After some time, the charger ended up with me, and on the same day, I opened it up for examination. To start, I want to say that the owner gave me full permission to modify or replace both the indicator and the internals or parts of it, if necessary. In general, at my discretion. Since this item is vintage and relatively rare, I will try not to change anything and keep everything in its original state. Apparently, Grandpa either used this device infrequently or very carefully. Both the wires and the casing are like new. The set included a manual, and it's a work of art. This is how instructions should be written. Of course, there are some typos, but those are minor details. The first pages provide general information about the device with technical specifications. It's a charging rectifying device with the velvety name Barhat or UZP where the last digits indicate that the charger is intended for charging 12-volt batteries and the maximum charging current up to. Then, safety techniques. Well, further on. Yes, damn it, the principle of the circuit's operation with a full description of all processes. Well, tell me who does that nowadays. No one. And who reads instructions in modern technology these days? This is the kind of instruction that's useful and even necessary to read. You can learn a lot. Next, the order of operation, preparation, and storage conditions. On the next page, there's a complete schematic of the device, but we'll come back to it later. Next, there are three coupons for warranty repair. On page 20, the manufacturer showed us silograms at control points under certain conditions. This is either in the USSR. Everyone knew how to hold a soldering iron and had an oscilloscope, or it was made for professionals. But in any case, it's simply brilliant. With any malfunction, you can quickly diagnose the device and understand the cause. After the oscillograms, there are the names of the components used, pinouts, and schematic symbols. Next is the layout of the components on the printed circuit board. In short, if they had included a drawing of the printed circuit board, anyone could have copied the device. Although, even without that, you could copy it, if you spend a couple of hours on the board layout. On the very last page, there is information about the content of non-ferrous metals and alloys. I skipped over this part, but there is also data on the silver content. Well, now let's move on to the device itself. It weighs a decent amount, about a kilogram. Moreover, the chassis is entirely made of duralumin. The top cover is made of iron with holes for cooling. On the front panel, we see a long gas discharge type current indicator, which also serves as the network indicator. To the right, there's a current regulator. There is also a compartment where you can hide the power cord with output wires. Well, now let's open it up. And inside, there's a perfect nostalgic atmosphere, familiar KT315. With MLTs, meaning the components are quite ordinary, except for these two resistors, S5-16. They serve as current sensors and note that they have a tolerance of only half a percent, meaning they are high precision. The circuit here is thyristor-based with phase impulse power regulation, an ultra-reliable and simple principle. Thyristors, 100V, 10 a Q202, with the E-index. For this device, they have a margin both in terms of current and voltage. They are also mounted on a fairly large heat sink, although, in theory, the efficiency of the circuit is very high due to the impulse regulation principle. 
and the thyristors will not heat up very much. Also, there are no power rectifier diodes here. The thyristors themselves perform the function of the rectifier. The declared power consumption from the network is 140W, and judging by the transformer, it seems to be true. Regarding the circuit, the manufacturer described the operating principle in detail and repeated or retell in his own words. I see no point. In the description, there will be a scan of the manual for those interested you can download and study it. I also recorded several videos explaining the operating principle of similar circuits. All links will also be in the description. The heart of the circuit is a relaxation oscillator built on a unijunction transistor KT117. It is the one that generates the control pulses for the thyristors. Almost half of the circuit is simply the control for the gas discharge indicator. It should also be noted that this circuit is equipped with current protection. In the event of short circuits, the voltage drop across the specified current sensors will be sufficient to trigger transistor V16. It will open and send a signal to the control terminal of the low-power thyristor K101. In turn, it will open and block the operation of the relaxation oscillator. Well, now let's proceed with the repair. In general, it's necessary to fully service the device, replace any damaged components if there are any, fix the indicator, and check the overall operation. To start, I think I'll test some components in the indicator control circuit, then we'll open the page with the oscillograms and look at the signals at the test points. To do this, we need to load the device with a current of 6A and take measurements relative to the seventh test point. As luck would have it, I have this super cool multimeter oscilloscope HS608 from RS Pro. This is a precision, waterproof, and shock resistant multimeter with a built in lithium polymer battery, a large colorful TFT display, and the ability to connect to a PC or smartphone. This device is 3 in 1, an oscilloscope a data logger with the ability to create graphs for all measurements, and a very high-precision multimeter with an error margin of only. When measuring direct voltage, the device comes in a large case with a full set of probes. You can study the full specifications on the RASPRO website. RAS is one of the leading suppliers of professional measuring equipment and original radio components. It is a global brand with an 80-year history. On their website, you will find any measuring equipment from top manufacturers. You will find the link to my multimeter in the description. Let's try to understand why the indicator isn't working. The transformer has a separate relatively high voltage winding intended to power this indicator. Everything is fine with it, the voltage is present on the winding. I didn't notice any breaks on the board. The power goes to the indicator through the rectifier. After this, we move on to controlling the indicator. I checked the diodes, then tested the drop on the Zener diode. Everything is as prescribed. Let's dig further. Next, I checked the transistors in the indicator control circuit. During the check, I noticed that the base collector junction of transistor V18 is almost shorted. And that's strange because there are no low resistance resistors in the circuit. Therefore, the transistor itself is shorted. Let's go older and check it. That's exactly the case. The transistor is junk. Let's dig further. I noticed some darkening near transistors V19 and V23 and decided to check them too. And as it turned out, it was not in vain. They're junk too. In this circuit, we also have a KT361. During the initial continuity test and external inspection, I didn't find any damage but decided to die older and check it just in case. Turned out to be working, but I'll replace it with an imported one just in case. There's a similar transistor nearby. I think I'll replace that one too. In the end, the first three KT315 transistors of reverse conductivity were replaced with imported 2N5551S. They are more robust in terms of both current and voltage, but the pinout doesn't match. However, a little modification with a file and everything is set. Were replaced. So, we used complementary pairs of switches, not just anything. Next, I tested the KT940 switches, which are also in the indicator control circuit. Everything is fine with them. That seems to be everything. I did the first power up through an incandescent lamp just in case. And lo and behold, the indicator works so everything is good. And the lamp can be excluded. When there is no load or battery at the output, part of the indicator lights up. This is the device's operation indication. 
With the battery connected, if you change the charging current, the indicator, so to speak, increases. It's a very beautiful sight. Next, you need to carefully inspect the board. It's quite old, and you can notice something like ring cracks. I didn't notice any breaks here, but I soldered the suspicious areas additionally. Next, we clean everything and proceed to testing. First, we switch the multimeter to ammeter mode and load it. The output of the charger with an incandescent lamp. Set the current to 6 amps. Then we remove the ammeter from the circuit, switch the multimeter to oscilloscope mode, and compare the waveforms with those specified in the instructions. Everything seems to be fine, meaning there are no issues with the operation. The current adjusts smoothly to 6A. But it's clearly noticeable that the current indicator shows an unclear value. On the front panel, there is a scale for the current in full illumination of the indicator. D equals a current of about 6A. The owner told me that he adjusted one of the trimmer resistors on the board. Here, by the way, is that resistor. It's specifically for calibrating the scale. So we need to recalibrate the scale once more. We'll set the device output current to about 3 amperes. Then, adjust the trimmer until the indicator shows the required value of the current. At the very end, don't forget to seal the trimmer resistor screw. Unfortunately, such indicators are not entirely linear, and there will be some variation at different current values. But our indicator can show the approximate charging current. We assemble everything as it was, and with that, the repair is complete. The output voltage of such chargers is pulsating. They say that this waveform even helps in restoring batteries. In the end, I connected a battery of supercapacitors to the output of our charger. This will simulate a battery. As we can see, the device charged the improvised battery to a value slightly less than 18 volts. This is sufficient for almost any type of car battery. However, considering the lack of voltage stabilization, such a charger can overcharge the battery, so the process needs to be monitored. Protection, current adjustment, and all operating modes have been checked, maintenance has been performed, and the issue with the indicator has been resolved. And so you're not left wondering how much such a repair costs, I'll tell you that it's free, except for the cost of shipping. I am very happy that another device, which is no longer manufactured, will bring joy to its owner for many years to come. Such devices are practically eternal. And with that, it's time for me to say goodbye. As always, this was Kazian K, with you, until we meet again.